Matthias, thanks for joining Testing Insights. Really happy to have you on here. Can you introduce yourself, uh, what you do over at H&M, why you're relevant to talk to about experimentation program management? Thank you, Ben. Nice to talk to you. So I've been working with experimentation for the past uh, five years in uh, different organizations. I've been working in travel, telco, now I'm working with H&M Group. Um, so I'm working as a senior data analyst, CRO, in a, a product team that works with um, the, the web checkout, basically. So it's a, it's a decentralized um, solution that I'm working in now, basically as a CRO specialist within that product team of nine people. So there's uh, two analysts in there, uh, product designer, um, de developers, and basically what we do is run continuous uh, user research and experimentation. So we have a central team, basically, that owns the part of the repository and the strategy when it comes to CRO, but we also have a decentralized solution where there is dedicated resources working with server-side testing. Basically, the, the central team works mostly with client-side. Some teams are adopting a server-side solution. So I've been working with both client-side and server-side in the past. And basically hybrids or um, only client-side or server-side. So no, it's only server-side. So that's great. I mean, that allows us to have like really uh, a lot of possibilities, like being able to scale up. Um, like we can actually run a lot of A-B tests and we have so many good ideas. So it's really fun to work in this team. Yeah, nice. Yeah, you, you set me up really well for my set of questions, which are quite a bit about the, the, the way that you're setting up the program there at the H&M Group. You know, you're working with for a product team in this particular channel or this particular area of the journey, I should say. Um, and you're, you're, you, you characterize it as decentralized, but then mm -hmm. you say you have a centralized unit that's taking yes. care of like the knowledge base and stuff like, like that. So that's my first question. How are you organizing the knowledge base of testing insights considering the decentralization? You know, so generally like your product team is producing a lot of cool and good ideas and customer insights. And maybe the product team that's focusing on um, acquisition also needs to know about those or wants to tap into that or something like that. So how are you managing your knowledge base of insights? I think that's a great question. And I guess like we're somewhere in between, right? With some kind of hybrid organization. It's also a huge organization. And when it comes to this knowledge, I mean, we have to use this knowledge to uh, make better hypotheses, right? Basically, we have to have the knowledge um, accessible that's that's a key asset and that's that's a challenge in a big organization so it also has to be uniform basically the the format has to be basically aligned yeah. and yeah basically it has to be scalable as well like new teams have to jump on the cards and and, and, and basically it has to be very flexible in that regard so we have one central repository where we keep the high, high level insights in slides basically one sliders we got, try to keep it short yeah. but then we, that's mostly for archiving and basically having it um, searchable, basically, so people can find it. That's most important about that. So the other part of it is basically within our product team, we also save more detailed reports of like testing insights and user research. And basically, that, that's that's what we review like on a weekly basis. Like every week, every Monday, we have like an innovation meeting yeah. where we um, take a look what we do last week or like in recent time what's relevant and what we can do this week to get live next week basically like planning prioritization and using those insights uh, basically to plan new research um, or basically uh, experiments and and, and just um, continue on that road nice yeah so you, you you went right to it i love the way that you structure your thoughts in terms of the knowledge base accessible standard format uh, super simple reporting. Um, it's been a, it's a super key um, um, part of that. So awesome. So you mentioned the innovation meetings, and that's when you're getting together the review and the plan. So that sets me up for my next question, actually, really nicely. Uh, how are you prioritizing the tests and research ideas from your backlog? And so this is actually this question, I guess, drills down to your product team. Um, you know, so you're, you're it's just the product team. Um, how are you in that weekly meeting? What are you using? So prioritize and, and swim lane as well, like within what your your purview. Yes, so um, we work with a system. I think it's, it's a great system. I'm happy to work with it. It's basically, I want to st start with this because I think it's worth mentioning. So we work with product increments, PIs. And every year has, uh, every year has five different PIs. 
and every BI has like a planning period of one or two days, basically. And in this BI, we set objectives, and those objectives are about business requirements, but also about the highest points of friction that we discover by experimenting and doing user research. And we literally note down in our objectives what we want to fix, what's most pressing. And um, basically, like for instance, what we also do, like we have like noted down in our objectives that we want to go live with one small experiment and preferably also one medium experiment every sprint. This really helps us to kind of keep on track with like what's most important. So that's like the more like the more like high level holistic le like view upon a, a prioritization. And then on the weekly basis, we also have these innovation meetings where we align uh, and refine ideas um, that are aligned with basically what is PI planning. So um, we apply the PI framework as a scoring system to experiments, but we're also very flexible. Sometimes um, we move experiment back due to other priorities, so we're very flexible. I think like um, what's most important for us is that we have a democratized system of working with experiment IDs. That's one thing, but then we take responsibility with the whole team with different competences to refine those IDs to what's most suited and to think about like what is the goal that we want to achieve here and how can we do it differently. So that's why we end up with very different um, executions sometimes. When an ID is like prioritized, sometimes it, it ends up becoming very different. But I think it's a good system. Like it, it's it's allowing higher quality to go out and allows us to learn more as well because we have to we, we have to spend a lot of time and resources on it, and that's worth it. That that's cool. One clarifying question: What's the cadence of the PI planning? Quarterly, like yearly? Yes, yeah, so it's five. Yeah, it's almost quarterly. It's five times per year. Ah. So, um, yeah, I, I, it's, it's new for me as well. Like I used to work mostly in a centralized solution with like with this product team area. And so we have a product area and product teams and they work with this kind of system. I think it's I think it's great. Really, it really yeah. helps to keep things on track and the sprints are planned according to the system. So I think it's really good. It reminds me of an OKR system, which is typically yeah. quarterly and right. And, and, and generally, like with I'm setting up a experimentation framework um, guidelines for myself and a lot of the programs that we work with. And I love the, 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 this product increment, the PI planning part of the uh, new nomenclature for me, but generally the stages of experimentation start with assessment and integration. How are you integrating with the business's objectives and strategy? Um, are you, are you pointing the direction? Are you look considering problems that align with that growth model of the business and stuff like that? Right. Then the next phase is the planning and process, which is the like your weekly using pie using that's the planning and process. Stage three is actual test execution. Stage four is decision and, and execution of of um, what you know what you find out considering your learnings. Um, so yeah, cool. Yes. That's that's and really also, fun. So Go sorry that. Yeah, I just want to say also, it, it, you're right, it, it's just like an OKR system, but I think the benefit of it as well, like the communication from top down and the opposite direction goes really well because this is this is like unified how it's communicated. And also it's like very, you can always adjust these objectives and make them more specific. And you learn on the go making them more specific and making them actually more realistic or like adjust them. So it's, it's a lot of flexibility, but it really keeps things well on track. So I really like it. Nice. Yeah, sweet. I'll have to look into that a little bit. Um, cool. My third question for you, pretty broad. I'm starting to ask this to a lot of people. Just like, what are you hitting your head on with regards to experimentation program? You, you talked to a lot of good things. Like you're really loving your system of uh, knowledge base. You're loving your, your, your planning and process and integration steps like that. What are you hitting your head up against, right? What are your top two, three struggles in, in the program right now? Yes, um, so a good question. There's always struggles, right? <laughs> uh, or challenges, as we call them. Um, I think like what's 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 what has been a challenge is like um, there are so many ideas that we have, and also I think like as a product team we have to be critical about how we work with certain things. Like we don't, we should not be too focused on the technical aspects. Sometimes that that's that's like if you work in a developer team, there's a lot of technical UI things that can be tweaked and you can't test everything, impossible. Um, referring to like the uh, conversion pyramid, 
Um, like you have the functional levels and basically accessibility, intuition, etc. But actually to get to like persuasion, actually working with swim lanes, like, like, like uh, pricing campaigns, like re motivational aspect. What is the num one, number one reason why people want to check out? Like best, best case scenario, maybe there should be no checkout almost. And like really um, being critical and allowing to basically have a holistic view and being, being able to test on every single level and picking out the low hanging fruits there. I think the constant exercise of zooming in and out in that aspect is, is, is a challenge. Um, but I think it's a fun challenge. So, um, yeah, I've got a bit of a solution there that I'm playing with. Uh, so it's a framework, uh, and, and by the way, this, what you, what are your, what you're characterizing as a struggle is what I would call a test manipulation struggle. Like, what do you manipulate? What do you intervene? Mm -hmm. At what level do you intervene? So intervention or manipulation are some common words for that. I've started with some programs. I started introducing a three classification set, like like it's, it's one variable, uh, like test intervention type. Uh, it, it's incremental, it's substantial, or it's disruptive. And so for every test, you tag it one of those three, and you start to run a bunch of tests, and then you look at the ratio of how many incremental tests you're doing, how many substantial tests you're doing, and how many disruptive tests you're doing. And generally you need to balance those because you, you need some of each, um, but you should start as a test program starts to become mature, your disruptive tests, as you allude to, like let's, let's start to test what matters, should start to make up about 50% of, of tests, maybe, maybe like arbitrarily, but that's a, in, in your in your database system, you start tagging your tests, and then you have a metric to keep you honest about about what you're testing, why you're testing it. Yeah, that sounds super interesting. Uh, yeah. I'd love to hear some more about it. Actually, yeah, it's 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 like it's it's a good it's like finding a way of working with it. It's like that that works really well. Also with the team, you know, like um, different competences together. Everybody wants something to say in the part. So I think it's um it's an interesting exercise to execute. Yeah, yeah, cool. Yes. Well, thanks, Matthias. Um, I really appreciate you co coming on, talking, going through these real quick set of questions. Um, any any last thing to say? Yeah, I mean, I, I've got a couple more st st struggles if you want me to to, to oh, name sure. them. Yeah, yeah. So, far. so basically, um, so the benefit of working with client side is that you basically can always press a button, right? You're just working with JavaScript and you just implement something. Technically, you, could, you have that freedom. So working with a server-side solution is, uh, if you're dependent on like a release pipeline that is not um, continuous, like updating tracking or is there a defect or you have to archive an experiment, et cetera, can be a challenge. So um, we're, we're making good progress towards like a continuous de de deployment uh, solution, but that's where we sometimes still had a bit of a struggle. That's that's one thing. And um, the other thing, uh, H&M as a, as, a, as a large organization, um, like a lot of teams, a lot of data, a lot of different um, uh, teams working with different things and sometimes like connecting one part to the other. <laughs> I think that's common for every big organization. <laughs> sometimes it's like, uh, it's, it's, it's an unclear landscape, it can be. Um, so, I mean, that can be a challenge. So, um, yeah. yeah. That is a, that's a classical one with the orgs, like the kind of the leaders of the company, which initially when the company was small, were very in touch with the customer. And the customer problem, they start to become more and more detached as they focus on the system of the entity of the business itself and less in contact with the actual customer. Thus the need for research teams and, and, and systems to create better decisions for that detached management layer. Um, okay. you know, and then how do you make that efficient? And a lot of team, and not a lot of organizations, it's not. But that's why experimentation is this new operating system to try to tackle this. Yeah. Yeah. I completely agree. Yeah. Thank you so much, Ben. Yeah. Thanks. I appreciate it. Uh, we'll talk soon. Thanks, man.